Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwann and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today we have the great pleasure of meeting with Kevin Dodrell. He's the Executive Vice President for Revenue Storm. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you, Gerhard. It's great to be here. So you are excited about and passionate about coaching. Mm -hmm. um, tell me, your, how, how did you arrive to a, a sound philosophy of what coaching looks like? Um, yes, I think it was through my career in sales, which started off a long time ago. Um, I won't say how long, by the way. And um, my passion grew through sales and understanding sales methodology and then ultimately moving on to coaching as I went into my own executive career. And then um, what I arrived at was that, um, especially from a sales perspective, the word coaching is grossly misunderstood. And uh, at Revenue Storm, we do a surveys um, where we survey sales organizations in terms of their competitiveness. And it's interesting because when you ask a sales manager how much coaching does he do, the answer invariably comes back, well, I coach every week. When you interview the salespeople and you ask them, how much coaching do you get? The last one I saw, 65% of the salespeople said they've had coaching either zero or one time in the last 12 months. So hence my passion for coaching, to understand what real coaching is. So can you define real coaching? Yeah, that was a leading lead right. in for you, right? That made it nice and easy for you. Um, right, so here is the misunderstanding, right? The sales leaders, and I don't think it's their fault, by the way, and first line sales leaders are critical in terms of any sales organization more so than what I think a lot of people realize. Um, when you ask them whether they're coaching and what sort of coaching they're doing, they put it under the banner of, well, I have weekly one-on-ones, right? I do pipeline reviews, right? But here is the deal with that. That's not coaching, that's reviewing. And the difference between reviewing and coaching is significant. So in terms of that, you'd have to go and say, well, how do you define coaching? Well, in the sales industry, we all love looking at sports analogies, right? Tiger Woods coach, the coaches of this. And, um, and so when you look at the easiest definition of a coach, and this is where we've arrived at. So a coach's responsibility is only one thing. And that is, a, is to provide the coachee or the salesperson with the insight and the confidence to take the risk to do something different tomorrow. The insight and the confidence to take the risk to do something different. Because that's how people grow. And the primary, right, because as human beings, we don't grow if we take risk, right? And you can think of many things probably in your own life where you grow through taking risk. Right. So that's the simplest definition of what a coach's responsibility right. is. So let, let's define it a little further. Mm -hmm. um, how do you get the insight and how do you get the confidence if you've never done the coaching? Well, that's where um, right, coaching is a profession and it needs to be taught. And coaches need to be coached on how to coach, right? right? which is actually one of the right. approaches that right. we do. So what, what's the difference between motivation and coaching? Ah. So coaching is the act and the process of coaching. Um, there are three dimensions of coaching which I can go into, right? right? But that is the act of coaching, right? Motivation is what emotionally excites us or engages us, right? So it can either excite us or it can disturb us, but human beings only change behavior when they're emotionally shifted. Right. Okay. Um, um, so every coach, every coach has a responsibility to emotionally engage their salespeople. Now this leads to an interesting point because you say, what is the thing that emotionally motivates a salesperson? And there's two things. There is recognition and there's reward typically, typically the two R's. So if you want to 
focus your coaching on something, you want to focus it on what feeds those emotions. And what feeds those emotions is winning his opportunities. Right. So that's why the primary number one focus of successful coaching is helping your salespeople win specific opportunities. Right. And that's opportunity coaching. So what's the difference between opportunity coaching and deal coaching? Um, none. Not, okay. None, right? It's just the vernacular so that you want to use. What role does sales training play in this? So sales training is important and, um, and, and it sort of works like this. Sales training bridges a knowledge gap. Knowledge does not change behavior. It's the coaching that bridges the execution gap. Right? Um, I ride a motorcycle and every year I go to motorcycle coaching school. I, I read every book about motorcycle riding, right? But that doesn't make me a good motorcycle rider. It's not until I go to motorcycle school with my professional motorcycle coach, which by the way, he makes me take scary risk, but that's the only way I can grow as a motorcyclist. And that's the same with salespeople, is that, um, is that the key focus of the coach is to get them to take risks. Now that raises another subject, by the way. One of the big deaths of sales organizations these days is how they become more risk averse, right? <laughs> right? But that's a cultural thing, right, which is a right, whole other right. subject, right? So let, let, give me some more insight on the three dimensions that you mentioned. What are those three? So, so back in the 80s, the uh, one-dimensional coaching used to be of the style of me boss, you student. Right. And young man, this is what I did when I was your age and you go forth. So it was very autocratic. In the 90s, that got a little bit politically incorrect. So we moved into two dimensional coaching, which was the sharing of ideas. Very collaborative. Why don't we go to Starbucks, have a coffee? You know, I could give you some feedback, right? right. So that sort of approach. But the problem with that is, it became very opinion centric. Mm. I don't think you're doing a good job. I think I am doing a good job. So it was coaching by opinion. Three dimensional coaching is the new age of coaching. And the three dimensional coaching brings three things in play. One is the thought leadership of the salesperson. Right? So that's important because he's the thought leader as far as his account or his deal. The insight of the coach in terms of professionally being able to bring insight to the opportunity. And the third one is the science of intelligent sales tools. And that's what changes the coaching construct from being opinion centric to option centric because you're looking at like a deal x-ray. So that's right. where right. um, three dimensional well, coaching Would you say the role of the coach is to uh, get the salesperson to recognize the other ranges of behavior, if you will, um, or other types of conversations to have with, uh, with the customer. So you open Absolutely. the salesperson's mind to multiple perspectives. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that's where the insight of the coach comes from. Right. right. And the lens for changing that behavior, you're always looking to the thing that drives them emotionally, which is winning. Right. If I'm if I'm focused on you winning, I can change your behavior. If I'm just trying to change your behavior for behavior's sake, you tend to get human resistance. Right. So um, how important is for the coach to discover the why? The why in terms of why they should change? Um, the why, what the motivation that fuels the need to win. Ah, um, um, so in terms of linking to their emotions, that is ob obviously critical to understand right. your people. Right. Some people are motiv motivated from an external perspective with rewards. Some people are motivated from an intrinsic perspective in terms of their own self-satisfaction. So understanding 
um, the, the quadrant, there's a four right. quadrant model in right. terms of what motivates your salespeople, is critical to linking to that sense of success right. and hence Got getting it. them to change. Okay. How long does it take to train somebody to be a good coach? So in my experience, if um, with a first line sales leader, you can typically get them um, um, coaching within a period of around about six weeks. Right, right. So if you bring them in, you provide them with the knowledge, um, uh, um, um, they understand the methodology, if they understand the science of the tools, and then a very critical part of that is actually working with them. And a lot of our work is with coaching first-line sales leaders, especially on how to coach their people. So we listen to them, we give them feedback um, in order to build them up to be a good coach. So how can people learn more about uh, your services? Well, they can, um, um, they can um, go to our website to see Revenue Storm. Um, and um, there are, uh, one of the things that we do is that we are very um, um, focused on understanding what can make your sales organization a success. So we don't do any work with you until we understand right, what does success look like and then what would be a potential roadmap to get to, get to that success. Well, thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you, Howard. Thank you very much for having me. I've enjoyed the conversation. Likewise. Go to uh, revenuestorm.com.